Hi, this is Ms. Ombo, and I miss seeing you all. I'm here with a read aloud called Trup by Janelle Cannon. And I'm looking forward to reading it together. The main character, Trup, is a type of creature called a fuzz head. And fuzz heads are about the size of a kid, but they're covered in soft white fur and they have crystalline blue eyes. Let's find out what Trup does. It all started when Trup began to wonder how big the world was, gazing out over the red cliffs of his home. Trup tried and tried to imagine what might be beyond. His head hurt from thinking so hard. Finally, he decided to see for himself. Trup marched to the family cave where he found Eep, Ert, Rao, Trow, and Mao. Little Yao slipped in just in time to hear Trup announce, I want to go past the red cliffs. The old ones looked at one another. Then Shrao told Trup, You have learned to survive on your own, but you know little about humans. Most people who see us fear us. Ert explained, If you wear clothes, however, they will not see who you are. They won't even notice you. Their pets may recognize you anyway, warned Mal. You must be very careful. Why do you think people don't recognize fuzz heads when they wear clothes. Little Yao waved as the old ones watched Trup eagerly set off on a trail that led away from the family cave. He scrambled up the red rock cliffs and teetered along the narrow canyon ledge. His strong claws kept him from falling. When the land became flatter and greener, Trup found cool, grassy places to rest at night. He was enchanted by cricket songs in the moonlight. One day, Trup came upon a path that was unnaturally straight. It led past people dwellings far in the distance. Uh-oh, Trup said. Try time to find some clothes. He started down the path in search of a disguise. Soon, Trup found something very strange standing near tall rows of corn. A large black bird was perched by its head. Don't be scared, called the bird. This old scarecrow doesn't scare me, cause I'm a raven. Ever hear of a scare raven? Croc, 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 he laughed. No, Trup answered, but I must find some clothes to wear so people won't be afraid of me. Well then, you sees, the bird replied, pointing his wing at the scarecrow. With the raven's help, Trup struggled into the pants and shirt. He covered his fuzzy white head with a hat. The bird flew away and returned, carrying a towel. He wrapped it around the scarecrow and said, Don't want him to catch Jill. He lit on Trup's shoulder, which means he sat on Trup's shoulder. And by the way, I come with the clothes. Call me Croc. How do you do, Croc? I'm pleased to have you as a companion. Trup replied as he headed for the unnaturally straight path. Large boxes of wheels now stood on that path. The raven fluttered aboard one that had an open door. All aboard, said Croc, this train will take us fast and far. As Trup stretched to climb up, the pants ripped. A cool breeze tickled his tail. Slowly, the big boxcar began to move with a sound like thunder. As the train picked up speed, the green land went by in a blur. After a long time, the train came to a halt with great screeching and crashing. They were in a gray, quiet place. When Trup leaped to the ground, he howled in pain. A clear, sharp stone had stuck in his foot. Broken glass, mumbled Croc. You have to watch out for that stuff here. Oh, wow, 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 Trup cried as he picked the sliver out with his claws. Why do you think the author chose for Trupp's first moment in the city to be
be painful and with broken glass. In no time, Shrub and Croc found busy streets crowded with people. The humans rushed past, their shoes clopping on the concrete. Shrub was amazed that they all thought he was one of them. They don't even notice me, cackled Croc. Thirsty and covered with dust, Shrub and Croc were delighted to find a pool of water. They drank and took a cool bath. Can't you read the sign, shouted an angry voice. No swimming in the fountain. A man in stiff blue clothes and shiny black shoes stood glaring at Shrub. Kids these days don't even know how to read. I'll just have to notify the authorities, the man growled as he stomped away. He must be hot too, said Shrub. I think that's a good point that Shrub makes, that adults would feel the same way in the situation because it's so hot outside. How come adults would keep that in and not respond to their need of feeling hot? Not far from the fountain, a woman in a red hat and a tiny dog with a red bow on its head sat on a bench. The woman was throwing bread on the grass. What a generous person, Shrub said to Croc as they hungrily snapped up a few pieces. But the woman yelled, Hey kid, get out of here. You shouldn't be eating food off the ground. And tell your mama to fix your pants. The little dog snarled. A rug a rug ruff, 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 ruff. He sees me, gasped Shrub. We better run. Shrub and Croc fled back into the streets. But a big woman blocked their path. Well, 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 she said. I see you're kind in town every once in a while. You're one of those cat things, Trupp froze. This woman saw who he really was. Looking for an escape, Trupp noticed the ground glittered with broken glass. The people dwellings were splashed everywhere with brilliant colors. Dark shadows stretched between the tall buildings. Trupp couldn't decide whether to stay or run away. My name is Bernice, said the woman. If you go running off, your feet will get even more cut up than they already are. Let me see your paw. Bernice seemed to know Trupp's foot hurt, just as she had known who he was. She hummed softly as she cleaned the cut on his paw. Then she covered it with a small bandage from a box she had pulled from a cart piled high with her belongings. Thank you, Bernice, said Trupp. I'm Trupp. And I'm Croc, said the raven. What are you doing here? Bernice asked. This can be an extremely dangerous place after dark. Lifting Trupp up into her cart, Bernice said to Croc, Come on, bird. It's time we got out of here. I'm going to take you two uptown where you'll be safer. They rolled along the narrow littered streets. Almost there, Bernice assured them. I know several good places to eat and sleep. Suddenly, a man jumped at them from the shadows. It's Mad Mo, Bernice hissed. He's terribly unpredictable. With a toothless smile and amazing strength, Mad Mo charged the cart and roared, Going uptown, eh? Well, I'll uptown you. Shrup, crocked, and everything Bernice owned went flying out onto the ground. Terrified but not hurt, Shrup knew just what to do. Take a closer look at what is in Bernice's cart. I see a picture of what she looked like when she was young, a musical instrument, letters, maybe a journal. Imagine what type of person Bernice is and what her life was like before she lived on the streets. He pulled off his disguise and hopped in front of the man. Hey, you're a c cat or something like that, Madmo stammered. Trembling, Trump said, Please leave us alone, or I may need to use my paws. The man's toothless mouth gaped. He looked at Bernice and gasped. You hear this thing talking? Bernice shrugged. Don't hear a word. The man clapped his hands over his ears and ran away, ducking his croc swooped about his head. Trupp dressed and everyone put the car ba cart back in order. Soon they arrived uptown and sat down outside the back door of a restaurant. I love Italian food, Bernice said. 
and the people who run this place like to share. Passing a tray of garlic bread, Bernice pointed and said, that's spaghetti on the side. They all ate heartily and with style. Bellies full, they went to a park with green grass and lots of trees. My favorite spot, Bernice murmured as they lay drifting to sleep beneath an old soft blanket. And then she chuckled. Funny, isn't it? I wear all this bright stuff to keep me from feeling invisible. When people stare at me, it helps me know I'm here. But Shrub put on clothes so he will disappear. Shrub sighed. I'm glad you saw me, but I'm getting tired of wearing all these clothes. I want to go home. I know what you mean, Bernice said. Early the next morning, Bernice showed Shrub and Croc to the edge of town. Thank you for not being afraid of me, said Shrub. Thank you for everything. Croc clucked in agreement. Bernice smiled as she pinned the big yellow button from her hat on Shrub's shirt. Ah, but I should thank you. It's not every day that I get the chance to help someone. Even the scarecrow waves bye-bye to them, and the raven stops on his shoulder. All right, when you think about Bernice and Shrub, they both wore clothes, but for different reasons. One wanted to be noticed, and one wanted to be invisible and blend in. Think about what's similar between them and what's different. And maybe you can relate this to your own life. It seemed like Shrub and Bernice wanted to be noticed for who they really are. And I wonder if there's somebody in your life right now that you could pay closer attention to and not make assumptions about but try to get to know them for who they really are. Thanks for tuning in. Bye!